Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. This time, we're going to be taking a look at the Mass Effects physics engine. So not too long ago, I came across this car commercial, and I thought it was pretty interesting. So I figured, hey, why not do a tutorial on it? And what do you know? Here we are. So to give you an idea of what we're looking for today, I'm going to show you a clip from the actual car commercial. So as you can see, it's just a bunch of blocks, and they fall and explode, and it's fantastic. Let's look at it again. And there it is again. So I definitely recommend that you take a look at that full TV spot. I'll have a link for it in the description. It's filled with all kinds of music, flashing lights, and lens flares. The whole nine yards. All nine of them. Not ten. I, I don't know why there's not ten, but all the other nine of them are there. Just go watch the commercial and then come back here. I'll be waiting for you. But anyway, here we are in 3DS Max version 2013, and the first thing I want to do is finish this game. And... Uh, well... <clears throat> Let's just start by building these blocks you see throughout the entire spot. So these are very basic. All they are are just boxes with rounded edges and it looks like the faces are inside a bit. So let's use that to get started. First thing I'm going to do is grab a box and drag it out. And I'm going to keep it simple and just make the length, width, and height 10. Alright, there we go. Expand my viewport. I'm also going to get rid of realistic. We don't need that. And the viewport background can be a solid color. There we go. Good. Now all we need to do to this box is right click it, go to convert to edible poly, select our edge mode, select our entire box, and if we scroll down a bit here we'll find the chamfer option. So just click the checkbox and we'll play around with the settings here. Let's just change this to uh, 0.5 and we can probably get away with three segments. That looks fine. Click the check mark to apply the settings, and we have ourselves a cube. Next, I'm going to want to scroll up to the top and select polygon mode. And all I'm going to do is select every face on our block. All right, that looks good. I'm going to scroll down again and find the bevel option. Pull the height down to the negative, and the and boost this up a bit. There we go, that's good for now. We don't need to get this precise. That looks about right. So before I deselect my faces, I'm gonna do something interesting. I'm going to first grow our selection just a bit to get these corners here. All right, and then I'm going to open up my material editor. And we're just going to take our first material here and drag it on to our highlighted area of our box. And then I'm going to press Control i on the keyboard, which will invert our selection. And I'm going to drag a different material onto our edges. Then when we deselect our box and go into these materials, we'll be able to change the individual colors of the faces and the edges. So these were white. And let's turn some self-illumination on just for the fun of it. And then we'll go back to our first material, which is our faces. And we'll just turn this to almost black, not completely black. And we'll give it a little bit of specularity too. All right, so there is our cube. Now we just need to align them into an array that's similar to this. So I'm going to grab my move tool, hold shift on the keyboard and drag out another cube. And it's going to ask you if you want to make it a copy, instance or reference, and how many copies you want to make. We're going to go with like 10. Press OK. And it's going to add 10 more blocks in a row to the one we already drug out. Then the next step is going to be selecting all of our newly made boxes. Go to more of a top view and dra hold shift and once again drag out this whole row of boxes. 
Yeah, make sure it's still on copy and we'll do 13 this time. Press OK. So now we have this little grid of boxes to work with and one last thing we'll do is select all of our boxes again hold shift and drag them up and we'll do six for this one so now we have this crazy array of blocks to play around with so we don't nearly have as many blocks as they do but just for the sake of render time we're gonna stick with this alright so now that we have all our blocks in a line we can start playing around with mass effects now, Mass Effect is something new to 3D Studio Max 2013 and I think 2012. If you're trying to use an earlier version, you're going to find that you don't have Mass Effect. You have the Reactor Engine instead, which is alright to play around with, but it can be a little limited. Which is why I wanted to use Mass Effect for this tutorial. So to get our Mass Effect options available for us to use, we just need to right click on any open area on our toolbar up here. It can be anywhere around here. So I'm just going to right click and select Mass Effects toolbar. And I have mine set the default over on the left side of my user interface, but you can drag it anywhere you want. But Mass Effects is pretty simple to set up. All we really need to do to get started is select our entire box of boxes or whatever you want to call this. And once everything's selected, we can go into our rigid body settings. When we click and hold down on this option, we'll get a few different settings. We can select dynamic rigid body, kinematic rigid body, or static rigid body. We're going to select dynamic right now. So it'll take a little bit and then you'll see all of our boxes will get these weird lines through them. And that's how you know the rigid body has been created. So now we need to play around with the settings, which is this button right here. So we'll bring up the Mass Effects settings. And one thing I want to point out real quick is that Mass Effects automatically has the ground plane set to zero. So wherever your grid is here on the bottom, wherever this little grid is, that will be the floor. So there's no need to add a flat plane on the ground level or anything like that. So let's go over to our multi-object editor. And right now you can see that our rigid body type is set to dynamic. You can change it if you'd like. But what I want to change right now is what these blocks are made out of. And right now our preset is on none and we can change any of these properties here manually. But to make things simple, I'm just going to select the drop down and uh, change it to concrete. So that's a preset made that already has the mass and density figured out for us. And that seems to work well for me. So mesh type is convex, that's fine. So everything looks good to start. So to test out if our rigid body is working correctly, I'm just going to hit the simulate button. So as you see, the blocks fall on top of each other and fall on the ground. And that's about it. All right, so we can see that the gravity is working well, which means we can proceed to the next part of our master plan. Or just add in the bomb. So if we take a look at the car commercial again, you'll see that these blocks start simulating. They start falling for a few frames, and then all of a sudden, something sends them flying through the air and tumbling all over the scene. Well, what we're going to use to get that effect is a bomb. And we're going to find this bomb is right here under our Create tab. So we're going to select Space Warps and we're going to find P-Bomb. And all we're going to do is drag it out onto the screen. The size of the bomb doesn't matter, but where you place it does. Right now, if I were to simulate with the strength of the bomb turned up really high, it would push all these blocks that away. So what we want to make sure we do is we place we want to place the bomb right in the very center underneath our box of blocks. So it'll be sitting right there in the center. And we're also going to reselect all the objects in our rigid body. Make sure we're still in the multi-object editor and we're going to scroll down to the bottom where we can add in a force, which is exactly what this bomb is. So we're going to hit add and it's going to give us a little crosshair here and we're just going to click on it. 
and it's going to add it into our applied scene forces. So if we simulate right now, you're going to see that all of our blocks still fall like before. But nothing really changes with the P-Bomb being there. Well that's because we need to modify a couple of the settings in the P-Bomb itself. So let's select our bomb and hop on over to the modify tab. And the first thing we'll see here is that the strength is nowhere near strong enough. So let's just jump up to 100 to start. And also, if we check this range indicator here, it will show us the blast radius of our bombs. Right now it's really big, but let's just simulate to see what happens. And our boxes fall, and the start time for our bomb is frame 30, so when we get to frame 30, kablow! You see there's boxes falling everywhere. So that's not quite strong enough. Let's stop reset our simulation and change the strength of our bomb to let's go to 1000 and we'll turn up the chaos I think that sounds like a song turn up the chaos get it now on iTunes alright so that explosion was way overkill I think we sent some blocks into orbit Let's go ahead and stop that. But as you can see, we're making some progress here. So as I said before, the ground plane is preset in Mass Effects, which means there's no reason to make a plane other than for a visual aid. So I'm going to just drag out a plane here so that we can kind of so that we kind of have an idea where the floor is at all times. So I'm just going to make this pretty large and center it up. Now we'll be able to see our blocks hit the floor a little better. The next thing I'm going to do is go back into the P-Bomb settings. Let's see if I select this. I'm going to make a few adjustments. So the strength is way too high. Let's change it to 500. We'll cut it in half. Also, the start time doesn't need to be 30 frames in. We can start at 5. If you look back at the actual car ad itself, they fall for just a few frames until it starts exploding. The other thing is our range. First of all, exponential is a little more accurate to real life explosions, so I'll just select exponential. And the range does not need to be 1000. We could change this to something simple like 100. As you can see now the range indicator is just a little bit around all of our boxes. Alright, let's run this simulation and see what happens next. And off we go. There goes our bomb. That looks much better. Much more like the commercial. Alright, let's stop that and reset. If we jump over to our simulation tool tab here, we'll find the simulation baking section. And what that will do is turn our simulation into actual keyframe so it's not so slow every time we want to see the box explode. So I'm just going to check bake all and give it a second to calculate. Okay, our simulation is pretty much done. And what that basically did is just added keyframes to each one of these individual boxes. So if we select any of them, you'll see that every frame has a keyframe set for it. And when we scrub through our timeline, it doesn't lag anymore. Because it doesn't need to simulate. Everything's set. So that's looking pretty good. That's about it for this tutorial. The only thing left to do is add in all of this motion blur that you see especially right here there's a lot of motion blur going on and the way we can do that really quickly and simply is go to our render setup scroll down to the bottom and change change the render engine from the default scan line to mental ray press ok and then go to our render scroll down a bit and enable motion blur Make sure it's set to all objects. And now, let's get in here. 
we hit render, it'll take a bit longer to render, but you'll have all this nice looking motion blur, which when you render out your final animation will make it look much more realistic. And that is the basics of the Mass Effects physics engine in 3D Studio Max. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you like this tutorial and want to check out more, you can head on over to youtube.com slash doodlypro to check out all of our other awesome tutorials. But until next time, thanks for watching.